Marriage and Civilian Life, 1759-1774 On January 6, 1759, Washington, at age 27, married the wealthy Martha Dandridge Custis, aged 28 and widow of Daniel Park Custis. The marriage ceremony took place at the Custis Mansion. Martha was intelligent, gracious, and experienced in managing a planter's estate, and they made a harmonious marriage. The couple raised her children from a previous marriage, John Park Custis and Martha Park Custis also known as Patsy, and they later raised grandchildren Eleanor Park Custis and George Washington Park Custis. They had no children together, his 1751 bout with smallpox may have made him sterile, but he grieved privately over not having his own children. They moved to Mount Vernon near Alexandria where he took up life as a successful planter of tobacco and wheat and emerged as a political figure. Washington's marriage also made him one of Virginia's wealthiest men and increased his social standing. He acquired control over Martha's one-third dower interest in the 18,000-acre, 73 square kilometers, Custis Estate, worth approximately $100,000, and he managed the remaining two-thirds on behalf of Martha's children. Dinwiddie had promised land bounties in 1754 to the soldiers and officers who volunteered during the French and Indian War, and Washington prevailed upon Governor Lord Bodetort, who fulfilled Dinwiddie's promise in 1769 to 1770. Washington received title to 23,200 acres, 94 square kilometers, where the Kanawha River flows into the Ohio River in West Virginia. He also bought additional land, doubled the size of Mount Vernon to 6,500 acres, 26 square kilometers. As a respected military hero and landowner, he held local office and was elected to the Virginia Provincial Legislature representing Frederick County in the House of Burgesses for seven years beginning in 1758. In the election that year, he plied the voters with 170 U.S. gallons, 640 liters, of rice punch, beer, wine, hard cider, and brandy while he was away serving on the Forbes expedition. He won election with roughly 40% of the vote defeating three other candidates with the help of several local elites. He rarely spoke publicly in his early legislative career, but he became a prominent critic of Britain's taxation and mercantilist policies in the 1760s. Washington lived an aristocratic lifestyle, and his favorite activities included fox hunting, dances and parties, the theater, races, and cockfights. He also was known to play cards, backgammon, and billiards. Like most Virginia planters, he imported luxuries and other goods from England and paid for them by exporting his tobacco crop. By 1764, a poor tobacco market left him 1800 in debt. He bolstered his solvency in the mid-1760s by diversifying, paying more attention to his finances, and reducing imported luxuries. He changed Mount Vernon's primary cash crop from tobacco to wheat, and he further diversified operations to include flour milling, fishing, horse breeding, hog production, spinning, and weaving. In the 1790s, he erected a distillery for whiskey production which yielded more than 1,000 U.S. gallons, 3,800 liters, a month. In the fall of 1770, Washington inspected the bounty lands in the Ohio and Great Kanawha regions, promised to French and Indian War veterans. He secured the appointment of William Crawford to make a survey of the lands, who gave Washington the best acreage on the tract. Washington told the veterans that their land was hilly and unsuitable for farming, and agreed to purchase 20,147 acres, while many veterans were happy with the sale others felt they had been duped. Washington's stepdaughter Patsy Custis died in his arms on June 19, 1773 after suffering from epileptic attacks for five years. The following day, he wrote to Burwell Bassett, It is easier to conceive, than to describe, the distress of this family. 
He cancelled all business activity and was not away from Martha for a single night for the next three months. Patsy's death enabled him to pay off his British creditors, however, since half of her inheritance passed to him. Washington became a political figure and soon emerged as a leader among the social elite in Virginia. From 1768 to 1775, he invited some 2,000 guests to his Mount Vernon estate, mostly those whom he considered people of rank. His advice regarding people who were not of high social status was to treat them civilly but keep them at a proper distance, for they will grow upon familiarity, in proportion as you sink in authority. He became more politically active in 1769, presenting legislation in the Virginia Assembly to establish an embargo on goods from Great Britain.